in the subtraction of two digit numbers shown, the letters P and Q each represent a single digit. The value of P plus Q is. So we have to fiddle around with this. Let me make it a little bit bigger here. So, all right, so let's see what we can figure out. The P minus the six is a nine. Well, obviously it's not a, a single digit, it's a carry. So we had to carry over a one in order for that to happen. So it's some number with a one in front of it, and if you subtract the six, you get a nine. So that's obviously a 15. So that means that P is a five. So P equals five. Now because we carried the one, this drops down to seven. So then seven minus Q is equal to four. Well, if seven minus Q is equal to four, that obviously means that the Q is equal to three. And you can double check, just plug it in. Eight, uh, P was five and Q was three. And does this actually equal 49? And I believe it does. So 85 minus 36 is indeed 49. So we know for sure that P is five and Q is three and they want P plus Q. So that is five plus three, which is eight. And therefore the answer is D. The length of a rectangle is twice its width. The perimeter of the rectangle is 120. The width of the rectangle is. So let's just draw a rectangle that you have x and 2x, right? Length is twice the width. The perimeter is 120. So the perimeter would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If you add up all those x's, it'll be 6. And they're saying that's 120. So that basically means that x is equal to 20. And therefore, what is the uh, question asking width? Well, the width is this guy, and that's x, and x is 20. So there you go. The answer is A for number 12. Elois purchased a number of water hand pumps to give to a charity. The mean average price was $85 per water pump. If Elois spent a total of $765, how many water pumps did she purchase? 765 divided by 85, that's the math, and that is 9. The answer is C. The number 385 has three prime factors. The sum of these prime factors is 385. Let's see. It's obviously divisible by 5. And then 7 and then 11. So that's the prime factorization of that number. These are the prime factors. And they want the sum of those prime factors. Okay, so 5 plus 7 plus 11. And I believe that is 23. So number 14, the answer is D. A circle has radius 2. If the radius of the circle is triple, the area of the original circle divided by the area of the new circle is. So if a, radius has a, or, or a circle has a radius of 2, and then you have a much bigger circle that has a radius of 6. Okay, so this is pi r squared, the area. Since the radius is 2, this would be pi times 2 squared, which is 4 pi. This, same thing, pi r squared. In this case, the r is 6, so that would be 36 pi. And what they want is the ratio, uh, uh, the, the area of the original circle, which is 4 pi, divided by the area of the new circle, which is 36 pi. That's what they want. And that looks like 1 over 9. And therefore, number 15, the answer is C. Brett and Juanita each have a glass containing 300 ml of water. Brett pours half of his water out, and then Juanita pours 20% of her water into Brett's glass. What volume of water is now in Brett's glass? Let's draw two glasses and let's see. So initially, they both had 300 mLs, correct? Uh, each have 300 mLs, okay. So this is Brett and this is Juanita. And then Brett pours half of his water out. So he gets rid of the half, so he's got 150 left, right? 150 mLs. And then Juanita pours 20% of her water. So initially it was 300 mLs. So 20% of that, I believe, is 60. So she's going to pour 60 mLs into that glass. So now Brett will have his 150 plus that new 60. And therefore, 150 plus 60 is 210. And therefore, that is the answer to the question. A circular spinner is divided into 12 Id identical unshaded sections and 3 identical shaded sections, as shown. 
Each unshaded section is three times the size of each shaded section. An arrow is attached to the center of the spinner. The arrow is spun once. What is the probability that the arrow stops in a shaded section? Well, let's see. We have 12 of the unshaded, so I'll just call that X for unshaded, and three of the shaded, and we'll just call that Y for sh the Y represents the shaded, and that total has to equal one. So we can get the proportions. We also know that they told me that unshaded is three times the size of shaded. That basically means that three is equal to X, uh, X is equal to three Y. So if I plug that into here, I'll get 12 times three Y plus three Y is equal to one. So that's 39 is equal, y is equal to one, so y is equal to one over 39. Now, the arrow lands on one of the shaded in the probability of three times y, right? Because there's three of those guys. So three times y is basically three times one over 39, which I believe is one over 13. And one over 13 is d. The Goss Bot Factory assembles robots. Each robot comes in one of three colors, red, blue, or green. Each robot also has numbers stamped on its head, one, two, three, or four. The nth robot assembled is the first robot to have the same color and the same number as previously assembled robot. What is the greatest possible value of n? So we have R, B, and G, and then we have the numbers one, two, three, and four. So greatest, okay, so we gotta maximize this. So let's say I have R1, I have R2, I have R3, and R4, okay? And then I have B1, B2, B3, B4, and G1, G2, G3, G4, okay? This is the maximum. I've presented all the possibilities for R, for B, for G. Now the very next one, regardless of what it is, will be a repeat of at least one of these guys. It will be the first robot to have the same color and the same number as a previously assembled robot. Whatever that is, guaranteed, because we've exhausted the 12 possibilities. So this is the 13th robot that's gonna come off the assembly line, and therefore the value of n is 13. So number 18, the answer is C. Five different integers in a list have a median of 10 and a range of 7, what is the smallest possible integer in that list? Five integers. Median is 10, so that 10 goes here. Range is 7, so from here to here it's 7 in terms of the difference. Okay, let's see. Smallest possible. Let's just go with the answer choices. Let's say that's a 4. That means this would have to be, this number here, would have to be 4 plus that 7, so that's 11. But that's a problem because now I don't have anything to put there because they have to be integers and they're all different. So that one fails. So we can rest assured that it's not four. Okay, no problem, let's try it again, let's try five. If that's five, then this is gonna, this number here, it's gonna be five plus seven, which is 12. That works, can I, cause, because I can put an 11 there, and this number doesn't really matter, it could be anything. And therefore, since this works, the smallest possible integer can be five, and therefore number 19 is B. A standing desk has 31 height settings numbered from the lowest height, 1, to the highest height, 31. Since the desk is not working properly, when the up button is pressed, the desk goes up six settings at a time if possible. Otherwise, it does not move. When the down button is pressed, the desk goes down four settings at a time if possible. Otherwise, it does not move. If the desk starts at setting 1, how many of the 31 settings will the desk be able to stop at? Well, we're starting at 1, and if we just press the up button, It'll go up by 6, right? So it'll go up 7, 13, 19, 21. Sorry, 25, and then 31. Now we're at the very top. Then we, if we press the down button, it'll go down by 4. So 31 minus 4, which I believe is 27, then 23, 19, 15, 11, 7, and back down to 3. So all of these are possible. So let's see here. Let me put them in chronological order. 1, 3, 7, 11, 13, 15, 19. We got 19 twice in there, interestingly. And then 23. Uh, 7 was twice also. I missed that. Uh, 25, 27, and 31. Okay, so these ones for sure 
we are able to reach. Now we got to do a little bit more fiddling around to see if there are any of the numbers. Okay, let's see. So how many do I have so far? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So, all, so it's not 9 and it's not 10 because I already have 11. So obviously I have to get a few more. Okay, let's see how many more I can get. We land at 3 for sure. So if we land at 3, if we press the up button, it would go up by 6 to 9. So 9 is one additional number I know I can reach. We are able to land at 13. Now if I press the down button from 13, I'd go down by 4 to 9. And again, if I press the down button, I go up down to 5. So 5 is another number that I've now been able to reach. So you just kind of keep going like this. It's a bit time consuming. Okay, well 25 is another number I can reach if I press the down button there. I go down to 21. And if I press the down button again, I go down to 17. So here's two more numbers. That's pretty good. Any more? Uh, let's see. 23 is something I know I can reach. If I press the up button, I can go up to 29. That's another one. And I think I think that does it. So I had 11 up here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 total numbers. And therefore, number 20, the answer is B.